can you all listen to me yes sir okay so today uh, we are going to start a new topic feature extraction in biometrics so okay so uh, in this segment of our discussion we will uh, talk about uh, the feature extraction techniques that that are used in biometrics okay now uh, if i ask you if we have uh, if we have a pair of uh, images grayscale images okay which are obtained from the same subject or same object okay and uh, uh, these two images uh, have different viewpoints that means uh, one image is uh, one image is found uh, at right direction okay and another uh, in rotated direction okay now we want to find a uh, matching between this pair of images okay now uh, uh, can you can you use these uh, two images for direct matching that means uh, we know that uh, uh, two images are having pixel values okay and uh, if we uh, go for direct matching between these two images then uh, what will happen we have two different images which are obtained from the same subject okay or uh, it might be from the different subject now uh, we are going to match these two images based on the pixel values okay just pixel values no other transformation uh, or no other data that will that will be used for matching only the raw pixels are uh, there okay in these two images and uh, we want to find a matching proximity or uh, we try to know uh, how much uh, how much the pixels are matching uh, with each other okay so direct matching is not possible with uh, pixel values why direct matching is not possible because uh, if we uh, go for direct matching then uh, there will be a noise okay so noise uh, noise and uh, redundant uh, pixels are already there in the images so th therefore it is not possible to match a match an object okay which is given in the image uh, with uh, another object in other image okay so this is not possible so direct we we generally don't prefer the direct matching because of noises and uh, the redundant information that are present in the images okay so therefore uh, we need to transform that uh, raw data or raw pixel values into another uh, into another uh, another form okay and uh, that form uh, may be some may contain some numerical uh, features okay or may contain some uh, geometric features in the form of uh, numerical uh, in the form of numerical data okay so here uh, we can define the feature extraction which uh, refers to a process of transforming raw data into numerical features that can be processed while preserving the information in the original data set okay so that means uh, when we transform the raw data or raw uh, feature values into another form okay and while uh, while transforming uh, we, we should also preserve the original information that are given with the raw data or raw features okay so here feature extraction refers to the process of transforming raw data into numerical features that can be processed while preserving the information in the original data set okay now uh, we can have two different types of uh, feature extraction manual feature extraction and automatic feature extraction okay so what uh, what feature extraction uh, approach or what feature extraction technique uh, we should call manual feature extraction and what feature extraction technique or approach we should call automatic feature extraction so manual feature extraction means the handcrafted feature okay so handcrafted uh, feature means some way we have to we have to provide some 
uh, we have to provide some uh, configuration information explicitly uh, before execution of the uh, or be, uh, before execution of the uh, uh, feature extraction technique okay that means uh, based on this feature extraction techniques we can write an algorithm and uh, and then uh, we can uh, write a program based on that algorithm and then when we execute the program we need to have some explicit data and based on that data that uh, uh, program based on the uh, based on the feature extraction technique or feature extraction approach uh, the, uh, the program will be executed okay so we need some explicit data or we need some configurative configurative information based on that the uh, feature extraction algorithm or feature extraction technique uh, will be executed in the form of program okay now in case of automatic feature extraction you we, we don't here we don't need to uh, do you don't need to provide the explicit data or explicit explicit information for executing the uh, executing the feature extraction technique or the feature extraction technique in the form of program okay so in the automatic feature extraction the uh, the corresponding algorithm automatically extract the features okay automatically extract the features then uh, uh, it has been uh, then it is encoded uh, for uh, matching or pattern classification okay now we can have uh, two uh, two other different types of uh, representation for image or any pattern so we can have the external representation or internal representation now what is in the external representation external representation refers to the shape of the object in the image okay or internal representation means the regional information regional information means the information which is obtained in the subregion of the images okay so this uh, information uh, which is uh, which is obtained in the subregion of the images are basically correspond to the uh, objects which are found in the images okay so uh, based on the representation and description we can have two uh, two different types of representation external representation and internal representation and uh, based on the uh, based on the feature extraction uh, techniques or feature ex 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 extraction approach we can have two different types of feature extraction uh, method one is called the manual feature extraction automatic feature extraction now uh, as i said uh, that uh, manual feature extraction refers to the handcrafted feature so handcrafted features uh, while uh, we are discussing about uh, the feature extraction techniques uh, that we used uh, in face recognition so uh, we can have the appearance based face appearance based features feature based feature based uh, feature based information or feature based uh, invariant point okay then model based features so these are the feature extraction approaches uh, which belong to the manual features or handcrafted features okay so when we run this uh, when we run this algorithm we need to provide some explicit data or a configurative information so that uh, that the algorithm and or manual features or handcrafted uh, feature extraction technique can be run successfully okay so here uh, we can have the appearance based method we can have texture based method we can have feature based method we can have model based method okay so the, the so here uh, we can see some examples uh, those are those belong to these uh, approaches so principal component analysis uh, linear discriminant analysis uh, we can have the scale invariant feature transform okay we can have uh, we can have the spirit up robust feature we can have the hog uh, features we can have uh, harris corner detection we can have active appearance model active save models so these are the feature extraction techniques uh, which belong to manual features or handcrafted features okay in case of automatic features uh, say here yeah, deep learning models uh, most of the deep learning models uh, belong to automatic uh, feature extraction techniques okay so uh, deep learning models uh, can include uh, convolutional neural network deep neural network reinforcement learning auto encoders and we can have uh, so many variants of 
deep neural networks we can have so many variants of convolutional neural network we can have many reinforcement learning techniques auto encoders so these are the basically automatic features feature extraction techniques okay or approaches so uh, based on this uh, based on these approaches uh, we can have uh, the features which are extracted automatically using this uh, deep learning models okay now uh, based on the representation if we uh, if we uh, talk about the image representation and description now uh, there is a question how an image is represented or how an image is described if we want to describe the uh, given image in terms of pixels or in terms of some other in transform information then uh, then we can use two different types of representation one is called the external representation another is called the internal representation okay so external representation uh, based on the shape information of the objects given in the image and uh, we can have the internal representation internal representation purely based on the regional information or the information uh, which we obtain from sub regions of sub images or sub regions of the given image okay so external representation uh, techniques may include uh, chain codes poly polygonal approximations boundary descriptors fourier descriptor uh, statistical moments so these are the uh, external representation techniques uh, or which are uh, which are based on the safe information okay so with these techniques uh, we can uh, describe the shape of the objects in the given image okay and uh, internal representation may include topological descriptors texture statistical approaches structural descriptors spectral approaches okay so these are the basically uh, internal representation techniques or internal uh, description techniques so which uses the regional information of the sub regions of the given image now what is the advantage of feature extraction why uh, we should go for feature extraction instead of using the raw pixel data for matching so as i said that raw we cannot use the raw pixel data which are present in the images okay if i take two uh, images which are obtained from the same uh, which are obtained from the same subject or from different subjects and uh, we uh, go for matching uh, for that pair of uh, images uh, with uh, with the raw pixel data then that raw pixel data cannot be used for direct matching because uh, we should not uh, we should not prefer the direct matching because of the noise and because of the noise and other uh, redundant information okay so this redundant information uh, are always uh, found uh, always found when an image is acquired okay so after image acquisition if we uh, directly use uh, that image for matching then uh, the matching will not be successful okay or the matching proximity uh, will be found to be very low so therefore uh, we should not prefer the direct matching with the raw pixel data uh, instead uh, we uh, we prefer to have a transform uh, transform feature set and with that transform feature set we can uh, have the matching proximity higher matching proximity and uh, in that case the matching will be successful okay now what are the different advantage advantages of feature extraction uh, uh, techniques so uh, we can improve the accuracy uh, we can reduce the risk of overfitting and we can uh, speed up the training we can improve the data visualization we can increase the we can in increase the explainability of model that means uh, previous before uh, before we reduce uh, the raw pixel uh, raw pixel information into some uh, into some uh, transform uh, data set it is uh, it is very difficult to uh, describe a model because with the raw pixel data or raw pixel information uh, the uh, that model cannot be describe properly so therefore uh, we need some transform data in reduced form uh, reduced form after removing uh, the noisy data and redundant information 
from the raw pixel data so after that uh, we can use that uh, we can use that uh, reduced form of transform data for uh, training purpose or for matching purpose and that will increase uh, that will increase the reliability of the system or reliability of the model now the first feature extraction technique uh, that uh, we are going to uh, discuss today is scale invariant feature transform or uh, in short it is called sift okay sift descriptor scale invariant feature transform now uh, this uh, sip descriptor uh, talks about the scale invariant features so uh, we shall come to that point uh, what is scale invariant or what do you mean by scale space or scale invariant features it is developed by david loe uh, uh, david loe and it is patented by university of uh, uh, ubci british columbia okay so it is patented by uh, university of british columbia and uh, it is similar to primate visual uh, system like uh, human brain okay or human visual system that means how uh, the human visual system works uh, it is found that the shift uh, works uh, shift uh, works similar to uh, similar to human visual system that is why it is called the primate it is similar to primate uh, visual system okay so as uh, david loe uh, david loe uh, developed this uh, feature descriptor so uh, he first published uh, a paper in 1999 uh, now the paper has got uh, 20000 plus citations and uh, then after 5 years with another version of sip descriptor he published the second paper uh, which was published in 2004 now uh, this paper is having more than 60000 citations okay so now you can imagine how uh, this works uh, so basically uh, this work was a uh, uh, game changer in uh, computer vision because based on this uh, work uh, so many thousand of works uh, have been developed and uh, those works have been uh, used in biometrics authentication those work used in uh, surveillance systems those work used in image recognition image teaching okay and uh, then uh, uh, 3d uh, 3d image recognition so all such works uh, have been used uh, this uh, shift descriptor so these two papers are more, most influential uh, papers uh, until now and another paper uh, the another paper was there uh, which was published by witkin in 18 uh, in 1983 scale space filtering okay so uh, this is that paper uh, from which the scale space concept uh, was uh, beginning that means witkin was the person witkin uh, witkin was the person who first introduced the concept of scale space so uh, this is that paper uh, which was published in uh, 1983 scale space filtering and it has got more than 4000 citations now uh, what is the goal of sip descriptor so we can extract distinct invariant features invariant to and the features are invariant to scale and orientation okay uh, it is also uh, shows robustness to affine distortion change in uh, 3d viewpoint okay and change in illumination and change in scale so uh, basically uh, we call this feature scale invariant feature transform so not only not only it is uh, it shows robust, robustness uh, to scale uh, uh, scale this uh, scale changes but also it is invariant uh, to orientation it is shows robustness to affine distortion change in 3d viewpoint and change in illumination okay so uh, that is why it is called the invariant feature transform or uh, 
uh, invariant feature descriptor now what is the what is uh, what was the motivation uh, behind uh, scale invariant feature transform or shift so initially uh, before uh, before shift came uh, there was uh, another operator uh, which is called harris operator or harris detector okay so harris operator uh, is not invariant to scale and correlation is not invariant to rotation okay so for better uh, but in, uh, but somehow it is uh, it was made uh, rotation invariant but it was not scale invariant okay and there was and there was not you know, there was no concept about the descriptor in harris in harris operator okay so uh, this was the first motivation uh, from which david lowe thought that uh, uh, he should uh, develop a develop an operator or a descriptor which will which will have which will have the property of scale invariance and uh, which will uh, which will have uh, rotation invariant property as well as uh, it shows some robustness uh, to uh, find distortion and 3d viewpoint and change in illumination okay now for better image matching uh, lois goal was to develop an interest of uh, an interest operator uh, that is invariant to scale and rotation okay and uh, david lois also aimed to create a descriptor which was not present in harris operator so that was uh, robust to variations correspond to typical viewing conditions the descriptor is the most used part of shift that means uh, in, uh, in 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 most of the applications in most of the applications uh, developers use the shift descriptors uh, only uh, in, uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, uh, in, instead of uh, include the other information like uh, the image locations uh, then scale and orientation so shift descriptor is enough to describe the image uh, uh, after after removing the noise and redundant information from the raw pixel data or raw uh, image data okay now what is the idea uh, of scale invariant feature transform now let us consider uh, there is an object on the uh, left hand side and another object uh, or another image which is given in the, on the right hand side now we will try to find a uh, match pairs between these two images okay now here you can see that uh, the first image uh, in the first image the object is given uh, and uh, the object is visible the most of the parts of the object is visible uh, from the uh, front view okay now another uh, the same object is appeared on the second image on the right hand side here we can see that but in rotated form okay that means the object is appeared in the image in rotated form so uh, that means the uh, two these two images have different uh, view these two images have different depth and those these two images have different scale okay so so under these circumstances or under this constraint uh, we should have the matching pairs between these two images okay now uh, here ship uh, plays an important role so here uh, image content is transformed to local feature coordinates that are invariant to translation rotation scale and other imaging parameters okay so this uh, this uh, local feature uh, this local features or uh, the, the the invariant features are called, are called the ship features okay so here you can see that there are there are some uh, locations at which the invariant points are found okay and these points are matching uh, these points are matching uh, to another image on the right hand side okay that means there will be some parts or there will be some uh, there will be some uh, gray level values uh, on which the on which the invariant invariant uh, points will be determined okay and this in this invariant point uh, will be considered as the match pair uh, with uh, match pair uh, with the uh, points in the other image okay now what are the advantages of uh, shift descriptor so it is uh, it is called the local uh, descriptor because 
since it is a uh, since uh, it is based on the based on the sub regions or the regional information that is why it is called the local feature or uh, local descriptor so here features are local so that the uh, it can show some robustness to occlusion and clutter okay uh, local features are always found to be robust to occlusion and clutter that is why it was made to be a local descriptor and uh, then uh, then uh, this the corresponding uh, descriptor uh, is called was uh, given a, a name as uh, sheep descriptor okay so here uh, basically the sheep descriptor and uh, sheep descriptor is found at the regional uh, regional uh, spaces so therefore regional spaces of the image okay so therefore it is called the local descriptor or local feature and uh, here individual features uh, can be matched to a large database of objects now if i consider an image grayscale image and from that grayscale image uh, we can extract a large number of uh, shift points okay now from that large number of shift points uh, we can have a we can have the potential shift points and these potential shift points can be uh, obtained after removing the outliers okay that means not all not all detected points uh, are found to be stable points okay so therefore we need to have the potential uh, stable points uh, which will be considered or which will be termed as the shift points or uh, scale invariant interest point okay now many features can be uh, generated for uh, even small objects so that is the that is the quality uh, of the shift feature or ship descriptor when we apply the ship descriptor uh, we can obtain we can obtain a large number of uh, interest point uh, for a small uh, objects okay now uh, it can shows uh, the real time performance that means we can use this ship feature for uh, real time systems and real time systems uh, this uh, this uh, uh, ship feature uh, or ship descriptor uh, perform uh, outperforms or uh, outperforms uh, the other uh, applications or uh, the similar type of systems uh, on which uh, the different uh, feature extraction techniques or different uh, descriptor uh, are using and uh, it can easily be extended to wide range of uh, differing feature types with each adding robustness okay so these are the advantages of ship uh, descriptor now uh, what is the procedure or what are the different steps are there in uh, ship descriptor so the first step uh, first step is scale space extrema detection now scale space uh, what is scale space here we will uh, talk about this scale space uh, for the sake of uh, uh, for the sake of understanding we just uh, or uh, sake of uh, just uh, explanation uh, we will uh go through these uh, steps then uh, we will uh, talk about this scale space extrema detection in detail okay so first step is a scale space extrema detection so here we search uh, here we search the stable points over multiple scales and imaged locations okay that means here we here we create here we create a multiple scales of the same image using gaussian uh using gaussian filter okay so as we know that gaussian filter is the low pass filter okay therefore uh, when we apply the gaussian filter uh, gaussian filter on an image then uh, that image becomes smoother okay that image becomes smoother okay so that means the sharpness of that image will be removed or minimized by applying the gaussian filter and uh, we can by changing the sigma value in the gaussian filter we can have the we can have a number of uh, number of such uh, smooth and uh, images so after applying gaussian filter that means by changing the sigma value in the gaussian filter we can have the multiple number of scales of the same image okay and over uh, over this multiple scales uh, we uh, we will search the stable points or stable interest point uh, in uh, on those locations 
where the uh, stable points are found to be either minima or maxima okay that means they are treated either as maxima or minima so we will come to that point uh, while uh, we will discussing the scale space extrema detection the next step is the key point localization so here we fit a model to determine location and scale okay so after uh, after finding uh, after fi uh, after detecting the stable points in the scale space now we will fit a model to determine the location exact location and scale so here we select the key points based on the based on a measure of stability okay then uh, third step is orientation assignment in orientation uh, assignment here we uh, assign the uh, here we assign a uh, direction based on the uh, gradient of magnitude information okay and the last step is the key point description so here we uh, here we obtain a key point descriptor key point descriptor of 128 elements that means here we obtain a vector of 128 elements and uh, this vector will uh, this vector describes uh, describes the point at which this key point descriptor is obtained okay that means uh, this key point descriptor uh, may contain uh, the uh, neighborhood information of that uh, of that uh, point at which the key point descriptor is obtained so here we use the local image gradient at selected scale and rotation to describe each key point region that means here where we also uh, obtain the image gradient at uh, at the point at which the key point descriptor is obtained okay and uh, then uh, we make uh, uh, we make a key point descriptor of 128 elements and this 128 elements of the key point descriptor describe the neighborhood information about the uh, about the image gradient uh, about the image gradient at that point now uh, our goal is to identify locations and scales that can be repeatedly assigned different under different views of the same scene or objects okay that means uh, if we consider uh, if we consider two images or more than two images of the same object then uh, this object uh, or these images uh, may be appeared in different uh, under different views okay now under different views uh, we have to find the match between these images okay now one image is given uh, one image is given at frontal uh, view position another uh, frontal view position uh, and uh, direction uh, and the uh, direction is the 90 degree and another is given uh, in some rotated form okay wait there is a phone call now here we uh, here we go for searching uh, searching for stable features across multiple scales using a continuous uh, function of scale okay so as i said that here we obtain a multiple uh, a number of uh, scales of the same image okay and uh, that can be obtained by uh, using a continuous function of scale 
now uh, the prior work uh, has shown that under a variety of assumptions the best function is the gaussian function so here we use the gaussian fun uh, function or gaussian uh, filter to obtain uh, such variety of uh, or uh, or a number of uh, uh, scales and uh, that can be used for getting the locations uh, of the uh, invariant interest point okay so here the scale space uh, of an object uh, is a function l of x comma y comma sigma so here l is the laplacian of gaussian okay so this is produced from the convolution of gaussian kernel with the input image that means uh, uh, if we uh, if we convolve uh, the if we convolve the gaussian kernel at different scale at different scale means uh, here we change the sigma value in the gaussian function now when we convolve this gaussian kernel with the input image then this function is obtained l of x comma y comma sigma and uh, basically this function uh, this function is obtained after uh, after getting the derivative uh, derivative over gaussian function with respect to the sigma okay that means uh, in one hand we have the laplacian okay on the other hand we have the gaussian function now when we uh, when we obtain uh, uh, that means uh, sigma square delta square uh, if g capital g refers to the gaussian function then uh, we we could write delta square g okay that means uh, we obtain the laplacian of gaussian and uh, laplacian of gaussian is the second order derivative and gaussian uh, field gaussian filter is the gaussian is a low pass filter that means the smoothing filter now if we combine these two functions laplacian, laplacian operator and gaussian functions then we then we obtain the laplacian of gaussian and this laplacian of gaussian when this laplacian of gaussian is convolved with the input image we obtain this function l of x comma y comma sigma okay so this is the three dimensional function in three dimensional function x y represent the uh, location of the interest point and sigma represent the scale so here basically we uh, change the uh, we change the sigma values and obtain the different scales of the same image now uh, what is scale as we are discussing that uh, we should obtain the scale space uh, for getting the uh getting the stable interest point in the scale space so therefore uh, uh therefore there is a question uh, uh, we should ask that uh, what should be the value of uh, sigma in canyon laplacian of gaussian edge detection okay so in canny as well as in laplacian of gaussian uh, we use this uh, sigma value okay uh, by changing the sigma value we can have the different uh, different appearance or different scales of the canny uh, canny's detector as well as the laplacian of gaussian function okay now what should be the uh, value of this sigma so we should decide uh, about the sigma value uh, so we will come this uh, we will come to this point uh, while we were discussing uh, the scale space extrema detection the next uh, the next is if we use the multiple sigma values then uh, how we should combine multiple edge maps okay so here multiple edge map means the multiple scale spaces if we create if we create a number of scales uh, for the same image then uh, and uh, this uh, multiple scales are obtained by using multiple sigma values that means by changing the sigma values we can obtain this multiple scales okay now if we use if we use the multiple sigma values then we will obtain the multiple edge maps or the multiple uh, scales now the question is how uh, we should combine this multiple edge maps okay the next is the special uh, coincidence assumption so we can make an assumption that at zero crossings uh, that coincide over uh, several scales are physically significant okay so here yeah, zero crossing means the edges in the images so edges means uh, the change of the label okay if we go from if we go from uh, white to black then between white and black scales 
uh, we have the edge okay so at that point uh, at that point is called the zero crossing so at zero crossing or the edges in the images so that coincide over several scales are physically significant but uh, here in uh, but uh, here uh, we should uh, we should uh, we should consider the uh, scale spaces scale spaces uh, where the interest point uh, will be found other than the uh, edges because uh, uh, along the edges the uh, along the edges the, uh, the interest points which are uh, found or on across the edges we can have the we can have the uh, different value but along the edges uh, we should avoid uh, the interest point which are found along the edges in the image now uh, Wittgen, uh, Wittgen uh, proposed uh, that uh, if we uh, if we apply the if we apply gaussian filter uh, gaussian filter on one dimensional function then uh, we can have uh, the smooth and uh, smooth uh, signal okay now that means on the if we consider a one dimensional function on the like on the uh, left hand side so after applying so uh, after uh, after applying uh, gaussian filter gaussian filter so many times by changing the sigma values so we uh, we obtain the smoothen uh, signals after uh, end of the operation that means at the bottom here you can see that at the bottom we can see the original signal one dimensional signal so after applying uh, after applying the gaussian filter we can obtain little bit smoothen uh, signal then again we are applying the gaussian filter by changing the sigma value uh, so in this way we can have a number of scales okay number of scales and if we uh, if we plot if we plot the zero crossings uh, zero crossings against uh, the number of scales then we can have the image uh, like on the right hand side okay that means uh, at the at the first value of sigma we can have a number of zero crossings okay and as we are applying the gaussian filter we are getting the smoothen uh, smoothen signals and uh, when uh, the smoothen signal smoothen signals are uh, found to, found to be more after applying uh, the gaussian filter by changing the sigma values the uh, zero crossings are getting disappeared okay zero crossings are slowly getting disappeared so uh, so for some uh, for uh, some here we can see that uh, at the first scale or uh, at the first value of the sigma we can have more number of zero crossings then after applying the gaussian filter we can have the smoothen uh, signal and little bit smoothen and for that uh, the number of zero crossings are uh, getting uh, minimized or uh, getting less uh, be, uh, than the previous uh, than the uh, previous version of the signal okay then again we are applying the gaussian uh, filter so in this way uh, we are getting uh, the signals in which the zero crossings are uh, zero crossings are getting in less number okay so here uh, if we so here uh, some signals here you can see that uh, the, at the um, at the top we have the closed loop okay at the bottom uh, so at the top the uh, here uh, the signals are uh, getting uh, closed and uh, at the bottom we have the uh, signals are open that means here at the bottom we have the uh, number of uh, number of uh, zero crossings are uh, getting increased at the top the number of zero crossings getting decreased okay so this arches shows uh, that at the at the at the bottom we have the number of zero crossing at the top we have the closed loop like uh, closed loop like uh, configurations where zero crossings are uh, zero crossings are getting uh, decreased or getting uh, minimized in number okay so 
since uh, since uh, witkin applied uh, this uh, witkin applied this gaussian uh, function on one dimensional uh, one dimensional signal we can extend this phenomena for two dimensional image signals also that means for fxy we can uh, extend this extend this application and uh, we can have a number of scale in number of scales of the same image by applying gaussian uh, smoothing filter now here we can have uh, here uh, you can see the another form of uh, scale space which is called the interval tree at the top of the interval tree uh, here we can see that only one uh, zero crossing is there so only one edge is there so from that point uh, from that point uh, uh, the tree the tree is divided that means at that point we can have the one node okay so after so after so some stability at some point the uh, at some point the interval the uh, the node is divided into two uh, two branches here you can see that uh, and uh, the number of points and uh, number of points uh, which are so here we can have the intervals and these intervals uh, if we consider the intervals are uh, intervals are the corresponding nodes then after uh, after getting down then the, the number of zero crossings are getting increased and uh, uh, the number of edges are getting increased and at the top of the uh, top of this interval tree we have less number of uh, less number of uh, zero crossings or edges and we can show the different uh, different uh, uh, different uh, shape of the interval uh, so we can see that uh, some uh, this these are the basically the uh, shape of uh, rectangle or shape of squares so these are these are basically the stable uh, stability this shows the stability of the uh, points in the signal okay so after getting down uh, after getting down uh, getting down along the interval tree we can have the less num we can have the more number of uh, zero crossings or uh, edges and uh, when we get uh, onto the top of the top of this interval tree we can have very less number of zero crossings and at uh, and the top of this interval tree you can see the signal on which this interval tree is determined okay now here you can see the this is the top level description of the one dimensional signal now after applying the uh, after apply, applying the stability criterion we can have the another form of the same signal that means uh, here we have uh, five different signals and for these five different signals after uh, after removing the noises the, these noises sometimes appeared as the edges okay these are the false edges so we have to remove these false edges from uh, from these signals so after removing these false edges or noises from these signals that means the uh, since uh, we have to obtain the stability of the interest point therefore uh, or the uh, stability of the uh, given signal therefore we need to remove the noises we need to remove the false edges from the signal so after removing the false edges we can have the uh, smoothen uh, signal so here we can see that the second signal uh, above the original signal uh, is the uh, it uh, represent the stable uh, signal after uh, after removing the false edges uh, and noises from the signal okay so after applying the uh, gaussian filter we can obtain obtain the another form of the signal and uh, at that form uh, we basically remove the false edges after removing the false edges and getting the stability of the signal we can when we show that uh, signal so we can obtain another signal uh, which you can see on the above of the original signal so here we have five different uh, original signals and five different uh, five different uh, uh, five different smoothen signals which are obtained after removing the false edges 
Now, what is uh, Laplacian of Gaussian? Now, suppose we have uh, we have been given an image, and uh, on the left hand side you can see the image. On the bottom of the uh, uh, below of this image here you can see uh, the signal. Okay, this is called the Laplacian of Gaussian, and this Laplacian of Gaussian function. So after uh, after uh, applying the Laplacian of uh, Laplacian of Gaussian on this image. We obtain five different images or five different scales by changing the sigma values. That means for the first image from bottom to top, for the first image uh, we we consider we consider uh, we consider sigma. For the second image we consider sigma square. For the third image we consider sigma cube and so on. Then sigma then uh, sigma four then sigma five. Okay. So these are the scale spaces. That means for the same image, uh, we can obtain a number of scales. And uh, Laplacian of uh, so from these scales, uh, we will obtain the local extrema. Okay. So local extrema means the local either local maxima or local minima. So this local maxima or minima is determined in the scale space of Laplacian of Gaussian. Okay. So when we apply the Laplacian of Gaussian, so we obtain a number of uh, scales, uh, number of scales of the same image. And after obtaining the number of scales uh, in the in this scale space, uh, we will uh, we will obtain the local uh, local extrema in the form of local either either local minima or maxima. Okay. Now from this scale space, uh, we. Uh, uh, we obtain uh, we obtain the scales uh, we obtain the uh, scales uh, of uh, of any pixels uh, any pixels on the scale spaces okay if we consider three such scales uh, on the right hand side here you can see on the right hand side three different scales these are obtained uh, so three different representations these are obtained from uh, three uh, three different scales okay so three different scales are indicated uh, by this uh, arrow and uh, we obtain these three uh, representation now we can uh, we can uh, now we can uh, obtain the local extrema uh, for a pixel okay now for uh, if we consider any any such pixel on the middle of the middle of the scale then uh, this is called the current scale and for this current scale we can have the adjacent scale that means uh, top of this uh, scale we have uh, we have another scale and bottom of this scale a uh, current scale we have another scale okay that means there are three scales so when we will find the local extrema uh, for the uh, for any uh, pixel point in the scale so we will define a 3 by 3 neval okay Three by three neighborhood uh, around the current pixel point, and three by three neighborhood at the current corresponding pixel point at top at the at the top of the scale and at the below uh, at the below of the current scale. That means, since there are two other scales, uh, two other scales. One is above the current scale and below the current scale. Then, at the corresponding position, we also we also define a three by three neighborhood. That means if we consider these three 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 by three neighborhoods, then uh, we will uh, we will actually considering uh, 27, uh, 27 pixel points. Okay, that means around that current around that current pixel points uh, in the current scale, we we will consider we will obtain the eight pixels, and above this uh, scale we have another uh, three by three neighborhood. That means from that neighborhood, we will obtain the nine pixels. Okay, and uh, below the current scale, we have uh, we have another three by three neighborhood at the corresponding pixel position. And uh, uh, from that neighborhood, we also have the nine pixels. That means now the current pixel in uh, in the current scale will be compared with the twenty six pixel values. Okay. So now, uh, if this uh, current pixel value is found to be less than all 26 values, or found to be greater than all 26 values, then 
we will call this point the stable point okay and this point is uh, if the if the value is found to be minimum okay then this is called the local uh, minima if the found, if the value is found to be maximum then this is called the uh, local maxima okay so local maxima whether it is local maxima or local minima so this uh, this local maxima or minima correspond to the local extrema okay and this local extrema is determined in scale space of laplacian of gaussian Now, uh, Laplacian of Gaussian sometimes considers the blob detector. Now, what is blob detector? Now, here we can see that the different uh, different uh, Laplacian different functions, uh, different functions of Laplacian of Gaussians. So, here we have the different. Uh, so, on the right, on the left hand side, here you can see the different scales. So, after changing uh, the sigma values, we are getting the different scales. So here we can see the four, four different scales are given, and uh, we have the three different blob, three different uh, uh, blob. Okay. Now for the first blob, so we can have the maximum. Uh, we can have the maximum scale space, which is uh, indicated by the second scale space from the bottom. Okay. And if we consider the second blob, then for the second blob, the third. Uh, third, uh, third uh, scales, third scale from the bottom uh, will be maximum. Will uh, be maximum to be used. Okay, will be maximum to be used. For the third uh, blob, uh, if we consider the scale, then we can have the we can have the last. Uh, we can have the top scale from uh, top scale or the final scales from the bottom. So that will. Uh, that will be considered uh, that will be considered to be used for this blob okay now the, uh, this is an image uh, this is uh, rgb or color image so after uh, so what we do uh, we first uh, convert this uh, image into grayscale image okay so after obtaining the grayscale image we will apply the laplacian of gaussian when we apply the Laplacian of Gaussian, so we obtain uh, we obtain this image for some sigma value. Okay, after after changing the sigma value, we obtain this uh, smoothen image. After changing the sigma value, that means we are gradually increasing the sigma value. So we start from here, uh, and for uh, for some value of sigma. Then we increase the sigma value. After increasing the sigma value, we obtain this image. After increasing the sigma value, okay, we uh, obtain this image. After increasing, uh, for the we after increasing the sigma value, we obtain this image. That means from the same image, uh, same image, we can obtain four different scales uh, while uh, the sigma value is gradually increasing. Okay, and. Uh, after uh, after uh, after getting uh, the after getting the smoothened image uh, for different sigma values so we can obtain the blobs uh, on the image okay and this uh, here you can see the blobs different uh, here you can see the blobs of different sizes so these sizes indicate that the uh, the corresponding uh, scale that was used to obtain this blob okay so here the here we can see the uh, op, here we can see the blobs of different sizes and this size size indicate this size of the blob indicate that that we are using some specific scale uh, for some value of sigma okay now the idea begins with uh, idea begins with the image pyramids now, what is image pyramid? So, so at the if we if we uh, if we consider an image which is given at the bottom, uh, at the bottom level. So this 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 is called the original image. So from uh, this original image, uh, we will obtain the another image in the second level. Okay, at the first level we obtain the original image. In the second level, we will uh, derive. Uh, another image from the original image okay 
according to some function so i don't know uh, so initially we don't have any information about the function so which function we are using to uh, to obtain this uh, derived image uh, at the second level from the original image okay at the third level uh, we can obtain another image which is derived from the image in the second level okay and uh, uh, if we extend this uh, if we extend extend this uh, uh, extend this function uh, for the for the subsequent levels then we can have the uh, different uh, different images of the reduced dimension uh, which are, which are basically obtained from the previous levels okay that means for some function we can obtain this image pyramids so image function may be image function may be good Laplacian of Gaussian. So image function maybe uh, we can take the we can take the mean filter. So with with that mean filter we can obtain this image pyramids also. Here you can here you can see that means at the bottom level uh, we have the original image and uh, if we consider if we uh, divide if we divide the original image into a number of subregions then. Uh, the dimension of each of the subregion will be two by two. Okay. Now for two by two subregion, uh, we can obtain uh, we can obtain a single value. That means after getting the after getting the mean of that you know, of these four uh, pixel values in in a particular subregion, so we can have a single value, and that single value uh, that single value will that single value. That means we can have a number of such uh, mean values or such average values so this mean values will constitute the another another image at the next level okay so at the bottom level we have the original image as i said that uh, uh, for some function we can obtain uh, this we can obtain this image pyramid image pyramid for some uh, for some uh, for for some image on which uh, this function is used or applied okay that means either we can use some uh, either we can use some smoothing function either we can use uh, some uh, or uh, sharpening filters okay that means uh, smoothing filters uh, say here mean filter max filter uh, these are the uh, order statistics uh, smoothing filters okay so either we can uh, either we can obtain this uh, uh, image pyramid uh, by applying the smoothing filters or we can apply the laplacian of gaussian uh, type uh, functions to obtain this image pyramids so these are the these are obtained at different scales okay that is why this is called the uh, scales uh, and and these scales uh, uh, and at in every image uh, we have the scale space and in that scale space we try to obtain the stable interest point now here we are applying the gaussian filter okay so after applying gaussian field uh, we obtain this image pyramid and this image pyramid is called the uh, scales that means the multiple scales are obtained okay so here uh, here we are actually applying the subsampling concept with Gaussian uh, Gaussian filtering, so here we have the original image. Uh, so here uh, we are uh, getting the dimension to be reduced at the second image. Then another image to be another image to be uh, another image to be obtained uh, with the dimension getting reduced. Okay, so uh, first the Gaussian function is uh, applied for uh, for uh, uh, for one by two, then Gaussian filter is applied for one by four. Then Gaussian filter is uh, applied for one by eight. That means, uh, with this uh, with this uh, ratio, the or with this scale, the image is getting reduced uh, by applying Gaussian uh, filtering operation. Okay. So here you can see that uh, we we are using this uh, Gaussian function g of 
your gaussian function is the three dimensional function okay three dimensional means the x coordinate y coordinate and sigma sigma means uh, sigma represent the scales okay and uh, this function uh, when this function is convolved with the uh, convolved with uh, laplacian function then uh, we can have that means the laplacian function is uh, applied or laplacian operator is applied on this gaussian function and uh, this uh, convolution basically uh, gives uh, gives the uh, gives us the partial uh, derivatives uh, over this Gaussian function. That means the del 2g, del 2g by del x2 plus uh, del 2g by del y2. So this is nothing but the uh, Laplacian functions. Okay, this represents this uh, Laplacian function, and Laplacian operator is the second order derivative. Okay, and this second order derivative is obtained after applying after applying uh, the Laplacian operator on this Gaussian function. Now, uh, you might have seen um, the heat diffusion equation uh, del G uh, by del sigma equal to uh, sigma del squared G in uh, physics. Okay. So, in physics, uh, you can see this heat equation, this heat diffusion equation. Okay. Now, if we represent this heat equation or heat diffusion equation in terms of Gaussian function, then we can write del G by del sigma. Okay, that means the Gaussian function is, uh, uh, so we obtain the partial derivative of Gaussian uh, function uh, with respect to sigma. And uh, we can write sigma del square g. So this is very similar to the heat diffusion equation in physics. Now we can extend uh, this uh, heat equation to obtain the difference of Gaussian. Okay, now what is difference of Gaussian? As we know that partial derivative represent uh, when we represent the partial derivatives on derivatives on digital computer, we take the relative difference. If we consider it for uh, a neighborhood, then uh, in the neighborhood pixels, we take the relative difference between the neighborhood pixels. Okay. Similarly, we can obtain the difference of Gaussian. That means we will take the two Gaussians with two different sigma values. In the first uh, Gaussian function, we are multiplying k with sigma. Here k is the constant. That means uh, we here we can uh, here we can uh, here we can change the uh, here we can change the k value. Okay. And uh, another function we write the sigma only. So g of x comma y comma k sigma minus g of x comma y comma sigma. That means the g of x comma y comma sigma this uh, this gaussian is subtracted from the uh, subtracted from another gaussian function in which the sigma is multiplied with k okay and this uh, this is going to be this is going to be uh, this is going to be give us the uh, give us the laplacian of gaussian so here k minus 1 sigma square delta square g so uh, this is nothing but uh, this is nothing but uh, the heat diffusion equation and this is also called the laplacian of gaussian okay that means uh, in place of laplacian of gaussian we can we can use the difference of gaussian so using difference of gaussian is same as that of uh, applying laplacian of gaussian okay that means we can we can approximate this laplacian of gaussian in terms of difference of Gaussian okay now here uh, uh, here uh, uh, here we can ask one question that uh, why we should uh, what will be the value of k uh, and what 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 is the starting value of k from which uh, uh, we will uh, we will start getting the scale okay or scale space So here we can here uh, you can see that uh, we can obtain the octaves and uh, in terms of uh, different in terms of the in terms of different sigma values. So here we can see the first row, second row, third row, and fourth row. There are four rows, and each row represent uh, each row represent one octave. Okay, 
and uh, we can start from 0 0.7071 uh, so this is the uh, this is the initial value of sigma so after multiplying it with uh, root under 2 we can obtain 1 okay and after multiplying uh, after multiplying uh, root on we after multiplying uh, root under 2 we can uh, we can obtain another value of sigma 1.41 okay that means uh, for these values we can obtain uh, the scale in the octave that means the first row is the one octave second row is another octave third row is another octave and fourth row is another octave so here we can uh, if we if we if we if we, if we look at carefully the second uh, row then second row is started from 1.4142 that means the middle of the uh, middle of the first octave that means uh, middle of the first octave the third uh, sigma value is used at the first sigma value in the second octave okay so in the second octave the image dimension will be reduced that means the resolution will be uh, resolution uh, resolution will be getting decreased when the resolution will be decreased the uh, the number of pixels uh, that will be uh, that will be uh, uh, getting also decreased so when we start the next octave uh, we should uh, take the middle of the value or some uh, cl some uh, closest value uh, of that uh, the first octave okay now what is octave here uh, so loe uh, loe proposed the pyramid scheme so in this pyramid scheme so here we can uh, obtain the octave so here the image uh, you can see the we obtain the first octave okay in the first octave uh, there are five different scales so five different scale these five different scales represent five different smoothen image of the same image okay so at the bottom uh, we start uh, we start from sigma 0 then sigma 1 sigma 2 and so on so in the first octave here you can see that five smoothen uh, images uh, five uh, five uh, scales in the second octave uh, we get the image dimension reduced okay image dimension reduced and uh, uh, in the second octave also we have the five uh, different smoothen uh, images or obtain now when you take the difference of the difference of any two uh, uh, any two any two uh, scales in any octave and then we we get the difference of gaussian that means here we are taking the difference of gaussian simply we uh, simply we get the difference of any consecutive two uh, scales and we obtain the difference of portion on the right hand side okay so in each octave uh, we obtain if the number of uh, if the number of scales are five then we will obtain four difference of portion representation okay that means from five we will get four uh, in the first octave similarly in the second octave uh, we are getting five scale different scales uh, for five different sigma values and uh, here we uh, obtain the same number of uh, same number of difference of Gaussian as that of uh, the difference of Gaussian in the first octave. Okay. Now, uh, after getting the difference of uh, Gaussian, so from this difference of Gaussian, uh, we will obtain the uh, we will obtain or we will detect uh, the extrema points. Or the stable interest point okay so as i discuss this uh, how to uh, get this uh, extrema points so this extrema points may be maxima uh, local mean maxima or local minima okay and this local maxima or local minima is determined from the difference of gaussian okay and how the difference of gaussian is obtained that i that i have already explained so here uh, each point is compared with its uh, eight neighborhood okay in the current image or current scale or current uh, difference of version scale and nine neighbors each in the scales above and below okay so 
here we can obtain the large number of extrema, extrema which is uh, computationally expensive okay so after uh, detecting the maxima or minima as uh, uh, as um, stable interest point the number of uh, extrema will be large okay now we have to reduce the number of extrema uh, as the potential interest point that means all the extrema uh, we are not going to we are not going to consider all the extrema uh, that are uh, that are determined in the difference of gaussian scale space okay now we have to we have to reduce the number of uh, extrema points so uh, which points uh, we should remove so uh, there there is a criteria and uh, based on the criteria we can uh, have the reduced number of interest point okay potential interest point now as uh, i uh, as uh, we are discussing uh, about uh, the value of uh, the number of scales and value of sigma so here what will be the number of scales uh, per uh, octave that means if we consider a octave okay uh, up, uh, consider a octave uh, for uh, gaussian smoothing uh, filter then after applying gaussian smoothing filter uh, or gaussian smoothing filter so gaussian smoothing filter will give us uh, the scales now what would be the number of scales per octave okay that means how many scales we can up to how many scales we can consider uh, per uh, for per octave so now uh, we can obtain a, a curve for repeatability that means uh, we uh, since this number of scales are uh, number of scales uh, number of scales depend upon uh, the images uh, which are uh, used for the experiment so uh, theoretically this is not uh, this is not uh, this is not decided that uh, the number of scales should be this okay so empirically we we need to decide about the number of scales per octave that means the images we are uh, we are used uh, we are uh, using for experiment so on that image on those images we will uh, determine the number of scales to be used uh, for per octave okay now if we use uh, if we use uh, uh, those images uh, for getting the number of scales then uh, uh, we have uh, we represent the repeatability along y axis and the number of scales along x axis okay and then we get uh, two different curves for matching location and scale and nearest descriptor in database now here we can see that after uh, after three scales uh, the curves are getting smoothened okay uh, curves are getting flattened so for both the uh, for both the matching location and scale and nearest uh, neighbor in database we can obtain uh, we can obtain two different curves and two different curves are getting flattened after after the three scales okay that means after three scales uh, we are getting the curves uh, curves are flattened so that means here we can conclude this uh, conclude that uh, after uh, so uh, up to three scales that means up to three scales we can consider uh, three scales means three different smooth and filtered image that to be considered uh, for per, uh, per octave okay so that means we can consider instead of five instead of four or instead of some abrupt number we can uh, we can consider three scales per octave okay so repeatability means the how many times the same point is the same same uh, same uh, points are detected and detected in three different scales okay that means the same points mean at the same location if if some stable point is detected at some location that means that location or that stable points will be repeated uh, repeated over uh, over the subsequent uh, uh, scales at the same location okay the, the, so this is called the repeatability that means uh, for uh, that means uh, for uh, matching location and scale uh, we have the repeatability uh, we have the repeatability near about uh, 80% and for 
nearest neighbor in database uh, we have the repeatability uh, up to 60 percent okay so now uh, for both these cases uh, we can consider up to three uh, scales per octal so after three scales that means we cannot consider from uh, we cannot consider four scale five scale six scale seven scales because after three scales the uh, both these curves are getting flattened okay so maximum number of skills will be three per octave as i said that uh, after uh, getting the large number of uh, large number of uh, extrema points we have to remove uh, a subset of extrema points uh, which are not uh, which are not potential interest point or which are not potential uh, seed feature uh, in the scale spaces okay now uh, when we remove uh, when we remove the outliers so these outliers may be the low contrast uh, points or maybe only localized candidate along an edge as i said earlier that along an edge whatever the whatever the extrema points uh, we are getting so that to be and uh, that to be removed from the set of extrema points okay so here to basically uh, we are considered uh, two different outliers for uh, removing from the set of uh, interest point or set of extrema points okay so the first uh, point that to be removed is low contrast candidate or low contrast um, low contrast points and poorly localized candidates or poorly localized points along an edge okay now the initial outlier rejection uh, can uh, rejection is performed by the taylor series expansion okay so taylor series expansion of difference of gaussian so we obtain the difference of gaussian then we get we get the taylor series expansion on uh, this difference of gaussian function if we consider the difference of gaussian function uh, as d then uh, we can write dx equals to uh, dx equals to the, this expression okay so here x is a three dimensional uh, here dx is the three dimensional function okay so x comma y comma sigma sigma is the uh, scale space okay now if we take the if we if we obtain the partial derivative of this uh, function dx then we make this uh, we make this uh, partial derivative equal to zero okay that means whenever we try to find the minimum or maxima at some location okay so at that location we obtain the taylor series uh, taylor series expansion so up uh, taylor, uh, taylor series expansion and after getting the taylor series of uh, expansion we obtain the partial derivative of this function dx and then we make uh, then uh, we make it equal to zero okay now here we get uh, here at that point x uh, here we get the x hat so this x hat represent the minima or maxima at at the point x comma y okay with a scale space sigma now uh, this value of uh, dx uh, is compared with some threshold okay that means uh, uh, extrema points are already detected now which extrema are to be are uh, to be uh, there in the feature set or which extrema points are to be removed so uh, that to be decided that to be decided uh, that to be decided subject to compared with the threshold okay so here uh, dx so here absolute value of dx is uh, compared with the threshold that means when it is found to be uh, greater than threshold then uh, we will consider this point corresponding point as minima or maxima or the potential interest point and rest of the points will be rejected or rest of the points will be discarded so these points are basically the low con these points are correspond to low contrast candidate or poorly localized candidate along an edge any questions If you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, uh, we will stop this uh, discussion now and we will continue this discussion in the next class.
Any question? No, sir. Okay. So that's all for today. So we will meet uh, on Friday morning at 10 o'clock. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you.